Welcome, I'm Michael Bicker. Thanks for joining me today as we explore concepts with the objective of improving your management skills and growing your business. Now, I wanna make sure you have your notepads and your pens handy, because you're gonna to wanna to take notes. I want you to make a commitment that you'll jot down some sort of action item that you can implement in your business today. Today, we are going to continue with our series on waste. That is muda, as the Japanese call it. And today's topic is the muda known as waiting. Waiting is clearly something that stirs up a lot of emotions and sometimes we get very frustrated by it and you can understand that waiting could be very wasteful and very detrimental to the success of your organization and keeping your customers happy, but it doesn't need to be. So we're gonna explore a little bit about the causes and the examples. Uh, I was thinking, you know, as I was, uh, preparing to talk about waiting, all these songs popped into my head. There are a lot of uh, 80s songs, you know, Foreigner, uh, there's a band called uh, New Shoes, uh, 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 uh. and uh, there is Richard Marx, and there is Aretha Franklin and George Michael, and then there's uh, that song Waiting for a, Stall, a Star to Fall, Bo uh, Boy Meets Girl, I'm getting my tongue tied a uh, white lion has that song wait there's so many uh, the beatles they're uh although that, that's not from the 80s but uh i think the, that's another reason or indication of how strongly connected emotionally we are to waiting is that the artists put together so many songs and uh maybe you could leave a comment of your favorite song involving waiting so let's explore and once again what i'll do is i will bring up some notes on the screen and i'll put a link in the description and you can download those notes for free so you don't have to take notes on the very things that i cover what the reason that i want you to take notes uh, once again is for that implementation that action item i want you to be stimulated this discussion should cause you to think of an area in your business in which you can improve where you realize oh yeah we are waiting because of that maybe i can put a little effort into that a little bit of management and we can become better we can add more value so uh, i want to remind you that we this is a, a series and if you haven't seen the original video on the seven and then there's another video on the eighth form of muda be sure and watch those you can watch this first if you want it doesn't really matter it doesn't have to be chronological we'll have the whole playlist here and we're not covering these in any particular order but i do elaborate on the concept of muda or waste in general and how that is very deleterious to your business uh, when it doesn't add value when you have these things and they don't add value it is really taking away and giving your competition an edge to the degree that they eliminate this and you don't. So you wanna flip that. You wanna make sure that you're eliminating as much waste as possible so that you can add value. Let's bring up on the screen some causes and examples of waiting and how that may affect your business. Okay, in no particular order here, I've got some causes and examples. The first one would be poor planning. So, I mean, that should maybe be obvious, but give consideration to whatever is happening in your business that is causing waiting. Could you plan better and eliminate some of the waiting? Disorganization, that might be just another way of stating the same thing, disorganization, but some person may take the time to really think out what they want to do and plan it out, but then they are maybe disorganized and they lack the organization skills inherently to pull off what they've planned. So I, I think of that as being different. And you, you've probably met somebody who has a really good idea or they have a really good plan or they got a good product or service, but their disorganization maybe causes them to be late from time to time, which their customers may be waiting on them if they're a contractor or a tradesperson of some sort, they're providing a service. Any kind of disorganization can lead to waiting and diminished value. I've got here mismanaged inventory. Now, inventory management is critical. You gotta have this balance. And we talk about just-in-time inventory and there's a liability to just-in-time inventory in the event that something happens and disrupts your ability to get inventory as quickly and readily re uh, replenish your inventory and replace sold inventory as you may have at one time. So 
there is a real art to managing inventory and making sure you have adequate supply. Uh, I've got here production interruptions and a few examples of that is equipment failure. Of course, if your equipment that you rely on to be able to produce your product or service uh, fails, there's a delay as you're either repairing it or replacing it or whatever you have to do. Labor is another one. Maybe you have somebody who's critical to the production of your products or services to fulfilling your customers needs and they call in sick or they go on holidays or maybe they're just worn out you know the law of the golden goose where you've gone to the golden goose far too often you rely far too heavily on that person and maybe they're there but they're not up to par their their ability to perform as they once did is compromised because they are exhausted also faulty materials or components so you might have raw materials that go into your product or service and you didn't notice and you continue you got a new batch of things from your supplier and you find out after you've been running the line you've been making your products or you've been uh, administering your service you find out there's some sort of defect something uh, that is uh, below the quality that you're used to and that can cause waiting while you remedy that problem the other one I have here is when demand demands for your product or services exceed capacity and I like to remind you that anytime demands exceed your capacity you will lose market share you will lose business so you want to be really careful you always want to look at your capacities and try to scale those up have uh, backup plans for how you can scale when demands increase and that's a really tricky thing we've done an entire video on just that but of course this can lead to back orders which is your customers waiting for the order and waiting lists um, inefficient processes once again what I want to specify here is other forms of Muda can lead to delays so if you think of maybe overprocessing, which is where you're adding steps or materials to the production of your product or service that don't really add value, but it still takes time. So that's going to add to delays. Uh, some other ones that we've already covered in other videos like motion or conveyance, those, both of those take time so they can lead to delays. They can lead to more waiting. So consider all of your processes and run this sort of uh, formula where you look at all of the different kinds of Muda and ask yourself, do, could you improve your processes by eliminating some of them? I mean, that's what we're doing today, but you can also realize that one leads to another. One form of waste begets another form of waste. And they are so integrated that uh, in today's discussion, as we look at uh, waiting, I can give you examples of almost how all the other forms of muda, all the other forms of waste do cause uh, potential for waiting. Uh, poor communication. So this may be that you are uh, not communicating to people and letting them know uh, how to do something. So that could be poor training. It could be a poor communication method in which, you know, in order to keep production going, there's a particular communication that needs to occur and you don't have the right technology set up for that communication and that causes delays because a person has to stop what they're doing and go across the other part of the shop floor, which is motion now. And uh, so poor communication, you can think of all the various ways that that can lead to waiting, to delays. Uh, subpar talent or skills. So when you add members to your team, you've got your human resources, your, your talent pool, and sometimes you hire people that just aren't very gifted at what you hired them for. Maybe you, you hired the wrong person for that. They didn't have, you know, maybe they're bright enough and they have talents in other areas, but you've got them mismatched in terms of what they're doing. You, you've seen these videos of people in some sort of production method or they're really skilled at a particular job, some kind of trade, and they're just flying through it. They're really gifted at it. Now, you can imagine if you hired somebody else trying to do that same thing who just doesn't have the knack, it's not their forte, then that can cause waiting and delays for your customers. Also, highly centralized resources or production methods. So I think of uh, maybe you have, uh, you're a healthcare provider, you're an accountant, you're a, a lawyer, doctor, whatever it is, and you're highly centralized. Your 
customers, your patients, whatever they are, your clients rely on you. Your business he is heavily centralized in terms of production because without you, it can't continue. So you go on holidays or you get sick and your whole business grinds to a halt and your customers are left waiting. Maybe, you know, the, the lawsuit that uh, uh, you're taking on for somebody has to sort of grind to a halt because you're on holidays or and, and you, you can't work on this. So uh, that's an example of a highly centralized resource or production method. And there's, there's plenty others. If you have only one supplier, as an example, for raw materials, that's fairly centralized. And if there's some interruption for whatever reason for that supplier, you don't have an alternative supplier. Now, once again, that highly, per, um, that highly centralized uh, resource is going to cause delays for you. So brainstorm this and think about how you are susceptible uh, or are you impervious to some of these things because you plan for them? Vague expectations. You know, I, I've seen, observed many times where people just don't tell their, or managers fail to tell their people, their team members, what's expected. And therefore the person may think, well, I, I'm putting out X number of units per day, or I have this much uh, time that I can involve in this over here versus that over there. I'm, I'm being pretty uh, nondescript here, but you get the idea that when you clarify your expectations, your priorities, you tell people, look, we, when we have customer demands, we drop everything, all hands on deck, and we go to that. Those types of communications and uh, letting people know with clear, clarifying your expectations can avoid delays as well. Uh, lack of accountability. So you may have actually taken the time to communicate to your people what you expect. So you've clarified your expectations, they're well defined, but you're not holding them accountable. So this goes once again to your human resources, or, you know, maybe they're completely reasonable, but but uh, nobody ever checks the person and says, Hey, uh, we're falling behind here. You know, you got to keep people on schedule, whatever your business is, product or service, people need to be held accountable to delivering to meet customer expectations. Uh, what about no measurements? Oh, by the way, when I talk about expectations, I use the example of expectations that an employer has of his team members and making sure those are communicated. What about managing the expectations of your customers? so that their perception of the waiting has been mitigated, where you let them know you don't over promise and under deliver, you let them know it's going to be 48 hours before we can deliver on this particular promise, or whatever it happens to be, you manage those expectations and customers, all of a sudden the perception of how long they're waiting, maybe they, they think 48 hours is reasonable, but they may have gone into something thinking they were gonna have something within 24 hours and you didn't clarify and so now it feels like waiting. You're detracting from the value equation. The customer experience goes down. So look at all stakeholders uh, as I give these examples here. Measurements is another one where, you know, if you're failing to measure, that can be a cause of waiting because you don't realize, oh yeah, we have slowed down over time. And you didn't realize, oh, this new piece of equipment, this new software is causing delays the new talent that we hired, whatever it is, all of a sudden your, your production, your ability to provide your service or whatever has been compromised, but because you don't measure it, it may be flying under the radar, so to speak. It may be imperceptible to you and you have the perception that everything is good, but your customers may be picking up on this. So measure, measure, measure. Black, black swan events is another one. Some things outside of your control, maybe there's a natural disaster, there is some sort of um, catastrophe that occurs that affects your supply chain, affects your customers or whatever, it's outside of your control, but all of a sudden, you everything has changed. Your, you can't provide uh, your products or services as efficiently as you once did. And the very nature, by definition, a black swan event is something that is unpredictable and it's you know fairly rare but you should plan for it you should say we know that this can occur so 
you want to uh, do things like decentralize, have backup plans in place for, you know, well, what if my internet goes down? It hardly ever goes down. Maybe it doesn't go down only once per year it goes down or once every couple of years does it ever go down. But do you have a backup plan in place for those black swan events so that your customers aren't suffering and you don't introduce waste into the system? The last one I have here is uh, defects or recalls. So you may not notice as you're producing something, whether it's your product or service, that it is below the standard, the quality standard that you expect. And when you discover that, you have to go in. Now you are launching an investigation. You're trying to discover the cause of that. That causes waiting. And that's uh, less than ideal for your customers. Of course, recalls where you need to bring back products because maybe it was a safety issue or it's just not meeting the quality expectation and you're planning to give everybody a new version of that, upgrade it, fix it, whatever the case may be. Well, that causes waiting and frustration. It certainly doesn't add value. So there's some uh, causes and examples of waiting. And I want you to think about those things in your business, brainstorm those, pause that video, download the notes that we have and look back at these and ask yourself, I mean, this is certainly not comprehensive. As I say, I'm not going to be able to brainstorm all the various ways that this Muda may manifest within your business. It's up to you to try to think of that. This is meant to stimulate you to think about it so that you can innovate. What about adding value through waiting? Can you actually do that? Now, remember, it's not really considered waste if it adds value. Therefore, it would not by definition be Muda if you had waiting involved, but there was actual value associated with it. So I want you to think about how you can mitigate those situations. You can offset waiting by adding value in some way. And I, I brainstorm some. What about anticipation and excitement that can happen from, from waiting? We all talk about, you know, sometimes the anti anticipation is the best part of getting something new. Maybe you get a new home and you're like, I can't wait. You're saying you can't wait. But in fact, the feelings, the emotions that you're feeling as a result of that is part of the, uh, the excitement. The same thing for, you know, Christmas or a special occasion. Maybe you're going to visit somebody. You have a loved one you haven't seen in a long time. And that can actually be a good thing. How in your business can you actually convert the waiting, sort of, so to speak, into excitement and anticipation? And I've got up on the screen here, the example of Disney and Universal theme parks, which I've attended many times, and they have made it an art. It's, it's the example that always comes to mind for me, because of course they wanna have their capacities, they make as much money as they can by loading up their parks. And then you might be in line for hours, like sometimes, there's a multiple hour wait for some of their most popular attractions. But what they've done is they've incorporated part of the entertainment into the line. So there's a story being told uh, as you're in line and there's, there's maybe uh, what they call uh, cast members that are entertaining you in some way or whatever. So you're actually part of the customer experience is the line. In fact, I've been uh, to these theme parks, both during times where it's really busy, like don't go in the summer during summer vacation. First of all, if you're in Florida, it's too hot anyway, and they're really busy. And I've been in the maybe late winter, I've been in February and March where it's not very busy at all. And that's when I'd recommend you, you visit these theme parks if you're going to go. And contrasting the two events, I mean, I much prefer being able to just go right onto the ride without any of the waiting, but I did notice, hey, that whole thing where they tell a little background story about this, uh, you know, and you, your experience to all these sort of props and things that if you, if you've been to this, you know what I'm talking about. They make it part of the experience. You go, you go right through that, you know, you're like right to the front of the line and you miss out a little bit on the experience. Um, so uh, yeah, give some consideration in your business. Is there something you can do to add to the anticipation and excitement where you're converting the uh, waiting to add value? Another one is scarcity. If your customers have the perception of scarcity, that can add value. You know, I think of the Tesla Cybertruck, which was highly anticipated. It was very uh, divisive. People either love it or hate it, but they have something like a million people that are waiting for that. Now, I don't think all of those people, because there's a refundable deposit, that a very low 
uh, amount of money that a person had to put down. But this scarcity probably drummed up more business. It added more value. Other people were like, oh, everybody's on the list for that. I'm going to get on that as well. The concept of we're sold out. You've all experienced that where maybe you're at a restaurant and there's a, a, a particular special and it's sold out. That can definitely detract from your experience. But also hearing about things like at Costco that they're sold out and you're never going to get it again, that can actually sort of add value where then the customers get trained to when they see something, they pull the trigger right now. That scarcity can add value where a person sees, oh, I, I should get this. They could sell out. There's a limited supply of this. And we've all seen limited editions of any type of product where it actually adds value. Well, I want a limited edition. I don't want one that anyone can get. Uh, I also have another anecdote. I was uh, talking with a Ferrari dealer one time and he was explaining to me that there was going to be a several month uh, wait in order to get a particular type of Ferrari. And he was saying that Lamborghini, by contrast, the Lamborghini dealer can, they have an inventory on ground available for immediate delivery. And he was using that as a mechanism to communicate scarcity and add value to his product. He's like, oh yeah, Ferrari, the, the very distinguished Ferrari customers know that you have to wait. But if you were willing to settle for a Lamborghini, you can go and get one right away but it's just not the same. And so that was an example of somebody trying to communicate value because of the weight that was necessary. Another one I have on here is exclusivity. And I, I suppose that's uh, uh, kind of the idea behind the um, uh, story I told about Ferrari, but you would you'd argue that, well, there's an exclusive uh, group of people that own a Lamborghini either. So it's a little different there. I think of bespoke or customized products that are highly, uh, customized to what you want or membership. It might be like to get into a particular private school or some club or whatever. It's like, well, you have to wait for an opening where, you know, it's very exclusive and that adds value. It's the exclusivity that people want uh, as part of the experience. So there, there's another way where the waiting can add to value. Uh, what about opportunities that cre are created in the buying process through waiting? If you take the time to market this and communicate to this to your customer, it's once again, managing those expectations. Uh, some opportunities may be like decisions. So you may sell a product in the person. Well, don't worry. You have time to choose your colors. You have time to choose your trim levels, maybe in a, like a new home construction person can proceed with the decision to have the home built and don't worry. You have an opportunity because of the time it's going to take to build the product you have an opportunity to make some of the decisions and some planning. Also modifications. It's like, don't worry, uh, you made some decisions today, but we still have time to modify your order if you need to. And that can add value to certain circumstances, certain products or services. People are like, oh, that's good. I can, I can change my order at a later time because maybe, you know, I'm going to be waiting two weeks for the product. And it's like, but between now and then, if you decide you want more or less or a slightly different variation of the product, no problem. Let us know. We can accommodate you. The other one is risk free. Sort of that cyber truck example as well. You can think of this where people might um, communicate the weighting in terms of value by saying, by the way, uh, we can go ahead and place your order right now and it's risk free. Your deposits fully refundable. And uh, if you change your mind, uh, that's no, no problem. Now, what they're hoping to do is get a mental commitment and then build that anticipation and, th and the um, excitement as opposed to the cold feet. There is a risk for the business owner to do that, but he modifies or he converts the waiting as a liability into an asset where people can proceed risk-free. Oh, there's no problem. You can go ahead and make a decision today. It's risk-free and they convert more people that way. What about uh, opportunity to range financing for bigger ticket items uh, and contracts? People are like, well, we can proceed with a decision today. And because of the weight that's involved before we're going to move forward with the product or service, that gives you the opportunity to arrange financing. Certainly very common in real estate transactions. What about tying up loose ends? And again, in a real estate transaction, maybe it's like, well, I need time to sell my house or I need time. I'm going to sell my 
my vehicle privately before I get my new one. Well, you've got time to do that. There's a bit of a weight involved here. Tying up any kind of loose ends. Uh, these are opportunities that again, it's up to you and your business to communicate them to the customer so that you can convert the idea of waste to value. And the last one I have here is flexibility. And the idea behind the flexibility is we, we often think of waiting as detracting from value, but some people don't want the product right away. They've made a decision, but it's like, but actually I'm going on vacation or something is changing in my life over the coming months. I don't want it until later. So having really good planning in your business, in your product or service, and being able to uh, be flexible with your customers. You can tell people, so uh, every now and then you take an order where maybe it's unusual, but people don't want it as soon as possible. And then you can actually move people up on the waiting list and you can shuffle. And if you have good scheduling, uh, customized scheduling software and processes that enable this, the flexibility is actually uh, a benefit. It adds to the customer experience. It adds to the convenience as well. And therefore the value increases. So there are some ideas behind waiting causes and examples of waiting and maybe trying to convert waiting from a liability from a form of waste that detracts from value into a way that you might be able to add value. Think in your business, how is waiting helping or hurting? It's almost assuredly hurting you in some way you know, better management. That's what this is all about. Better planning. You want to mitigate this. You want to cut down those wait times. And remember what I said about measuring. So I'm not going to reiterate the whole thing again here. That's where I want to leave it today. I hope you got something out of this. Make sure you implement in your business some improvement, eliminate a little bit of waste and see what happens there. See how you are actually increasing your value for your customers. And remember the degree to which you do this and your competitor does not, you are going to thrive. You're going to get ahead. You're going to steal market share, get some of those customers from your competition, um, interacting with you. So, uh, leave a comment. And when you do, and people read those comments, you can push back. You can agree with me. You can give er other examples. Everybody learns from that. And we need to learn from one another. Perpetual refinement. <laughs>